Welcome. You will start your hike at the plaza area. From here, the top is visible one mile away and almost 800 feet above the surrounding land. Stone Mountain is made of a rock called granite. Let's learn first how this granite formed here. Please limit to groups of 10 or less. If every rock has a story, you would think a rock the size of Stone Mountain has an awesome story. Well, <laughs> you're right. The scene is 300 million years ago. The continents that will one day become North America and Africa are on a collision course. Collision is a bit misleading, because these continents are coming together at the rate of several centimeters a year, or about the speed that fingernails grow. Plate tectonics is responsible for this landscape in motion. Heat is the force driving the movement. These continents get closer and closer until crash gigantic masses of Earth. Unbelievable force. Huge bodies of rock collided, pushing and piling rock atop North America. This pile of rock will eventually become the Appalachian Mountains. Let's dive down about seven miles below the Earth's crust for a closer look. After the initial impact, continental crust continued to pile on top of one another. The relentless force caused layers of rock to fold and buckle. Folded rock generated such large amounts of friction, heat, and pressure that areas of rock completely melted, forming magma. These bodies of magma cooled and became igneous rock, like granite. The geology of the landscape reveals clues showing that Stone Mountain was created just this way. Stone Mountain developed from a cooled body of magma deep within the Earth. But how can we see Stone Mountain today if it formed seven miles below the Earth's surface? Well, the surface land resting atop of Stone Mountain eroded and weathered for millions of years, finally uncovering Stone Mountain. That is why we can see Stone Mountain today. For over 3,000 years, mountain visitors hiked this gentler side of the mountain to the top. The One Mile Trail offers an opportunity to explore how the mountain's geology contributes to a unique ecology and human history. This walk is moderate to strenuous and can be very slippery when the rock is wet. Emergency call boxes are located along the trail and in the parking lot. So what you're seeing here is a 19th century quarry wall. This is a ledge of granite that was blasted off by quarry workers who were using the rock to build with. Stone Mountain's made of a very, very hard rock that would stand the test of time, made it great for a building material. Some of Stone Mountain granite was used in the Panama Canal. Some of Stone Mountain was used in the steps to the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And many of the post offices in Georgia are built with Stone Mountain granite. What you're looking at here is a stage three, moving towards a stage four successional weathering pit. Uh, what you can see uh, as you scrolled out was the prickly pear cactus. So that's the only native cactus in Georgia. And when you think of a cactus, you think of a very dry desert-like environment. Uh, and that's what Stone Mountain is for plants. Uh, very, very little soil. The soils are made of sand, uh, lots and lots of sun. Uh, and very little water. When it does rain, there's only um, about 10% of that rain that gets soaked up by the soils. So you see prickly pear cactus. Uh, you also see beautyberry uh, over here, and that's a, a shrub. So that's how we can tell it's moving to a stage four succession. The very first thing to grow on the rock would be lichen. And lichen doesn't need soil because it's not a plant. It's fungus and algae combined. So as we move up the mountain, we'll see different stages of succession. The lichen on the rock would be a stage one succession. And we will continue our walk. So when the mountain was formed, it was formed under seven miles of earth and rock, and that's a lot of weight. So Stone Mountain was pushed down by all of that weight. But as that weight was weathered and eroded off of Stone Mountain, Stone Mountain is expanding due to pressure being released. As pressure is released, what you're experiencing is exfoliation, the sheeting uh, and the cracking of the mountain itself. And we have a very good example of that right here. Um, if you'll listen 
to what the rock sounds like when I knock on it. You'll hear here. And if you listen here, it sounds a little bit different. That's because this is an expansion pocket. As the mountain expands, it's popping. Uh, and this is uh, actually has space underneath it, a few inches of space. And what you'll typically find is a lot of these rocks that I pick up are coming from these expansion pockets. And if we look back behind me, we'll start to see what this looks like once all of that top of that rock is cracked off. You'll get this crescent-like shape on the mountain, and this makes for great places for soil to settle and for things to start to grow. So, as we go along, look for these shapes on the mountain, and we'll start to see that there's a lot of exfoliating of Stone Mountain. Look for long cracks in the granite. These cracks, or joints, formed when the mountain expanded after it was uncovered. The cracks deepen as the granite expands and contracts when heated and cooled over the seasons. Plants and tree roots also contribute to the expansion of cracks. Eventually, large boulders are separated from the mountain. Stone Mountain has always been a place of interest. Native Americans, early European settlers, and Atlanta residents were drawn to the tall mountain visible from many miles away. When visitation to the mountain kept increasing, two businessmen built towers on the mountaintop in the late 1850s. There also was a halfway house at this spot. Visitors could buy a cup of water for five cents. Plants and trees on Stone Mountain often seem to grow right out of the rock. The trick to growing on hard rock is waiting for something to break it down. Lichens first wear away bare rock, forming small depressions. As soil collects, mosses, grasses, and wildflowers can grow, followed by shrubs. Finally, the soil can support loblolly pine trees, which grow short and twisted due to the drying winds and lack of water. What we see here is a very good example of weathering on the mountain. If you had to take a guess at what was moving through here, my first guess is water, and I'm sure that would be yours as well. Uh, this is a very good example of physical weathering. The water is moving down the rock each time. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. It's gonna wear away that rock over hundreds and thousands of years. And that is one of the contributing factors to the size of Stone Mountain getting smaller. Once at the top, does your tired body need a whirlpool? Don't use the pools at the top. They're already in use. These pools called weathering pits begin when depressions form in weakened areas of granite. Rainwater collects and combines with organic plant acids to deepen the pools. One animal, the clam shrimp, and two endangered plants, quillwort and pool sprite, live in the pits on top of the mountain. Welcome to the top of Stone Mountain. We're getting some great views, about 786 feet above the surrounding ground. As we pan across, we're moving west to north, and you can see off in the distance, that is Atlanta, Georgia. You can see this downtown skyline. And as we move north, the next city you'll see is Buckhead. And north of Buckhead, way off in the distance, you may be able to see the slopes of Kennesaw Mountain. But today is a pretty hard day to view because of smog. Atlanta has some pretty high air pollution, so what we're seeing is, is the haze of, of a lot of the, the traffic that's causing the smog. But great views from the top of Stone Mountain. We've hiked about a mile from the bottom to the top. And Atlanta, as we scroll back towards Atlanta, Atlanta is 16 miles west of Stone Mountain. Don't forget to ask for your climbing certificate when you get back.